this is dr sad in front of you and today my topic is the neoplastic prolapse as in our previous lecture we were discussing about the non neoplastic prolapse so in this lecture we will be covering the neoplastic prolapse so as its name indicate neoplastic means those prolapses that are due to some neoplastic masses prolapse due to neoplastic means cancerous mass in git tract so this is the neoplastic polyp now the most common site for the neoplastic polyp is the colon and that is the most common is the colonic adenoma so colonic adenoma is the most common neoplastic polyp means the polyp that occur due to some neoplastic lesion due to some neoplastic mass clear so that is the most common is the colonic adenoma while we also have others this is most common this is most common we also have others like the adenocarcinoma we have the neuro endocrine tumors we have stromal tumors we have the lymphomas metastatic tumors so there are different types of the tumors that can uh, result in the prolapse so most of common is the colonic adenomas now basically these colonic adenomas they may be we are we will be discussing the colonic adenomas in detail so these colonic adenomas they may be sessile or they may be pedunculated most commonly but they are pedunculated most oftenly but they can be sessile they can be pedunculated both they have uh, they are almost about 0.3 cm to 10 cm means their size is ranges from small to the large and uh, you can say their surface or their appearance is velvety appearance or raspberry appearance these adenomas clear this is the somehow the histological feature now these adenomas basically these colonic adenomas they are divided into they are classified as first of all is the tubulous adenomas we have the villous adenomas and we have the tubulo villous adenomas now first of all is the tubulous adenomas tubulous adenomas remember the features of this tubulous adenomas these tubulous adenomas they are small in size very important feature i will tell you why A small in size they are pedunculated pedunculated means that the peduncle is a stalk is there this stalk is present and on this the tubular gland is present clear and they are less invasive just remember this thing then we have the villus they are large in size they are sessile and they are more invasive now and tubular villus have characteristics of the tubular plus villus means both characteristics are present in villus we also have the villi on their surface villi on their surface now there is a, a rule that if the uh, means lesion or you can say a polyp is is large in size you can say greater the polyp a greater the lesion greater will be the invasion chances or it can say you can say the greater will be the malignancy chances chances so the malignancy chances are more in the villus because it is large in size so that's why it is more invasive it is a small in size that's why it is less invasive this according to this uh, statement that greater the polyp then greater will be its invasion property clear now uh, after this tubulus villus and the tubulo villus we have another type of the adenoma that is called as the serrated serous serrated adenomas we have serous serous serrated adenoma 
serous artery adenoma is basically it is similar similar to hyperplastic polyp as we have studied in the non neoplastic polyp about the hyperplastic polyps they are the non neoplastic polyp so the ser uh, serous artery adenoma are similar to the uh, hyperplastic polyp histologically histologically they are similar but where the difference is the difference is uh, this sessile serrated adenomas uh, it is not serous it is sessile sorry sessile serrated adenomas basically these adenomas are more common in the right colon while these hyperplastic non neoplastic polyps were more common in the left colon remember that then these sessile they are malignant they have the malignancy chances while these hyperplastic they are non neoplastic and they are non malignant so remember the difference between these are the two differential points from the sessile serrated adenoma and the hyperplastic polyp is that clear now after this uh, we have uh, another uh, that is you can say the intramural carcinoma it is intra mucosal carcinoma means when the carcinoma when it breaches the basement membrane and it tries to reach towards the lamina propria or the muscularis propria it is called as the intramural carcinoma this is the terminology that i am going to tell that uh, that i was telling you so one important thing here i have to tell you that uh, the most important thing that is the lymphatic channels in the colon is not functional so the lymphatic channels they are not functional in the colon that's why the metastasis does not occur so when the metastasis does not occur so the polypectomy can be done and it can be cured clear one important point is to be remembered now we are moving on towards other type of the polyps that are the neoplastic other type of neoplastic polyps that are the familiar adenomatous polyposis then we have the uh, you can say another jelens syndrome that we are going to study clear so this is about your neoplastic polyp and further neoplastic polyp we are going to study further and uh, in this we have studied about the colonic uh, adenomas where we study about the tubulus we have tubular villus and the tubular villus we studied about the sessile serrated adenoma sessile serrated adenoma histologically are similar to hyperplastic polyp because they have the serrated appearance both of them have serrated appearance means they have like this appearance this is called as the serrated appearance now intramural carcinoma i have told you and now we are moving on to the familial adenomatous polyposis what is familial adenomatous polyposis i think so you have heard this term many times fap fap familial adenomatous polyposis f a p familial adenomatous polyposis it is basically a autosomal dominant disorder this is a autosomal dominant disorder that is characterized by the multiple polyps multiple colorectal polyps are present in this uh, condition familial adenomatous polyposis now why this occur this occur because of the loss of function mutation in apc gene this apc gene is a tumor suppressor gene and if the loss of function mutation in this apc gene occurs it will be resulting in the familial adenomatous polyposis clear this uh, in about apc we have discussed detail in our neoplastic lectures you can uh, watch if you want to go in detail of this apc otherwise just remember that this is just the mechanism or you can say cause of this the mutation is the cause of this familial adenomatous polyposis now they are uh, are according to uh, means with the, we have some extra intestinal manifestations also of this familial adenomatous polyposis like there is the retinal pigment congenital hyperplasia of the retinal pigment epithelium clear congenital hyperplasia of the retinal pigment epithelium now this is about your familial adenomatous polyposis now this is also associated with other diseases and that forms a syndrome we have two syndromes that is called as the one is the gardner syndrome now in the gardner syndrome we have certain 
diseases like FAP, we have osteoma, clear? We have the epidermal cyst and we have the fibromatosis. This is the Gardner syndrome characterized by the FAP, osteoma, epidermal cyst and the fibromatosis. Then we have another syndrome that is the Turcot syndrome. This Turcot syndrome is characterized by FAP plus any CNS tumor. Clear? So these are the two terminologies that were mentioned in one of your books. So that's why I have mentioned them here and they may come in your paper. That's why I have mentioned them here. So Gardner syndrome and the Turcot syndrome. This is about your familial adenomatous polyposis. Then we have another that is the hereditary non polyposis colon cancer. The last one that is the okay, I'm erasing it. I'm writing it here. Hereditary non polyposis colon cancer. Hereditary non polyposis colon cancer. HNPCC. That is also called as the Lynch syndrome. Lynch syndrome, Lynch syndrome, whatever you can call it. So this is the hereditary non polyposis colon cancer and in this uh, what happens that the colon cancer or you can say uh, the colorectal cancer in there in this condition there are multiple prolapse in different regions like it, it may be in the colorectum it may be in the endometrium in the ovaries in the stomach in the small intestine in the skin even in the pancreas in the hepatobiliary system so in the brain also so these are the prolapse that are present in different you can say uh, your parts of the body that's why it is also called as the Lynch syndrome characterized, characterized by the number of means problems mean number of prolapse they are present in different regions so this is the hereditary non polyposis colon cancer uh, but it is most common in the colon this is also most common in the colon and in the colon also it is more common in the right colon remember this thing clear this is more common in the right colon and uh, why this occur obviously the uh, the re reason is the mutation mutation occur in those genes that carry out the means uh, that you can say control the detect or they detect the uh, means uh, dna replication and they detect the uh, repair error repair they detect excise and repair the error in the dna replication so those genes that detect, that repair or and that excise the error in the DNA uh, replication, so that genes they are mutated in the uh, HNPCC or the Lynch syndrome. So this is the cause of this and uh, they are basically sessile, uh, these prolapse they are sessile and uh, this is all about the prolapse neoplastic prolapse remember one thing that fap I, I forgot to tell you about fap that if fap it is not treated it will obviously it will be leading to the adenocarcinoma because these are neoplastic prolapse neoplastic means that if they are not treated they will be uh, means they will be converted to the adenocarcinomas it will be leading to the uh, means the cancer so fap is a condition that can lead to the adenocarcinoma in 100% of the cases if it is untreated and it may uh, it may be before 30 years of age or after uh, approximate 250 years of age it may be 100% if the FAP is untreated it may be resulting into the adenocarcinoma so this is all about your neoplastic prolapse in which we have studied about the adenoma sessile serrated adenomas we studied about the FAP and the Lynch syndrome so if you have any query, any confusion, you can ask in the comment section. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.